Muslim hordes, so you're making it easier for them to raid Muscovy and decide to fund your efforts. What's probably happened there is they've stolen the money from Muscovy and said, you probably need this more than we do right now. <laughs> How do you make a nation capitulate in this game? You make a peace deal with them. So, for example, I click on this. I click on make peace. And then we can choose what territories to take from them. And as to actually making them capitulate, the most important thing is probably this. It will tell you what the war goal is. So in this instance, take Luki. So we need to take this province back. And then Moscovy might actually start losing. And also just doing damage to them. So if you hover over the percentage number here, current war score, war goal, attacker controls Luki, minus 16. So because they have Luki, there's a minus 16. So that's half of all of this number. And then also blockades. Because Novgorod's blockading a bunch of stuff, because Novgorod is a trading nation, they have a lot of ships, so it's not surprising. We get bonuses for that. And then because they own a bunch of my Lithuanian territories, we lose some. And then also from battles, so we fought 16 battles, most of which we've won, so we get plus 4 from the battles. It's all about the war score going up or down. So the better you're doing, the better your war score, the worse you're doing, the lower it is. So right now it looks like we're doing badly, but I would say we're not, actually. We're pulling this one back. I've fought the long fight here. And it's coming up in our favor now. I can invest in a new idea. Oh, aristocrat. No one's got aristocratic yet. That's interesting. No, we're saving it for Miltech. And what I'm very tempted to do is I can now start focusing military. I'm going to do that. It's going to mean we struggle a little bit for admin and diplo. But we want the military um, tech. And we definitely want the aristocratic ideas. Like, soon. Uh, question is, do I want to go and take Polokas, or should I go to Lithuania and say, yo, you need to take that? I'm going to say to Lithuania, yo, you need to go and take that. And then I'm going to just spit out a couple of troops here and just go and grab these. Without taking too much attrition, hopefully. And then we'll station the rest of our army really close to the fort. So if Muscovy comes along and tries to uh, hold it from us, we will be able to intercept them. And go, no! Oh, I can actually station my entire army here. Let's do that. Although with a 20,000 man stack here, it's unlikely that Muscovy would try and do anything against us. You know what's nearby? Moscow. Now, unfortunately, Moscow is actually pretty well protected by different forts, so it would not be easy. Ooh, they're coming through here again, taking severe winter, plus three um, attrition. So, who says that only Russia gets the winter? Because <laughs> I don't. Unfortunately, you don't get the mud uh, bonuses like you do in uh, Hearts of Iron. Ooh, it's really muddy through the Ukraine. Yeah, have 70% attrition. It's actually a really bad way of modeling mud attrition. Um, I'm actually gonna... am I? I'm wondering if I want to get rid of the Hungarian revolt risk. How much would it cost me to say, just, just leave me alone for now? Handle them. Harsh treatment costs 54. Worth it. That just means I don't need to deal with them during this battle. Okay, so Muscovy is now saying they want a peace deal. What are they offering? White peace. So that that's a good sign that Muscovy is very worried about what's going on here. Recruitment is out of necessary necessity, something that must be decentralized affair. Often it is entrusted to the nobles in the capital, and they are responsible to turn a set number of men in from the various provinces under our control. So we can lose some professionalism, we can gain some professionalism. However, the schlachter get annoyed with us. It also means that Ruthenia gets a massive amount of unrest. Uh, and it's also minus 50% manpower for... Ooh, 10 years. I'm going to take the local issue. Yeah, it's going to mean some uprisings, but once the war is over, we can deal with that. Even taking mercenaries if necessary. Oh, I'd really like to get as much out of this Muscovy war as possible. Like, what I really want is for Novgorod to take territory back. Although, right now, Denmark is occupying it. Damn it, Denmark! Although, Denmark might demand the same thing. Unlikely. Oh, you're ready. Let's go bring all of these chaps back. Yeah, we definitely need to build a couple more troops during the interim peace era time thing.
Unfortunately, my units are really not very well drilled at this point. Uh, okay, that's fine. Ooh, Brandenburg's fight Bohemia. Oh, I am glad you did not drag me into that one. Brandenburg's the aggressor. So Brandenburg's trying to take stuff from Bohemia, though. This fight, actually, Brandenburg's winning. The Space Marines aren't quite here yet. Oh, no. Bohemian, just sheer weight of numbers. Yeah, Bohemia's going to win that one, ultimately. Oh, there's the Muscovite army. What remains of it? I'm going to let you just march through. You're, you're taking attrition. Actually, you're not. Um, let's cause a nuisance. Because it looks like Lithuania is taking the sieges back. Then I'm going to say, Lithuania, your job is to take this as well. Balloon. Let's go this way. Need to be wary of the uh, river crossings here. Okay, we can come in behind them. Uh, hopefully we can push them into one of my uh, forts. Premisil is a forest. Although going from Bells to Premisil would not cause me to cross the river. You know what? With 27,000 men here, I think we can do it. Are you running? No, you're going to Noe Sax, which is Highlands. That would be more of a pain to take. Oh, they've peaced out. Novgorod. Oh, damn it, Novgorod. No. You morons. Novgorod will cede one, two, three, four, five, six provinces to Muscovy. None of those are better than mine. Karelia, Luki, Sereka. No, they're not. All right, well, peace is, uh, war's over. Damn it, Novgorod. Just needed a little bit more patience and you would have come out of that one smelling of roses. Brandenburg's calling me against Bohemia. Damn them. This is a war they've started. You want to call me in a war against my ally? Right, so this is really the point where I'm going to have to go, who do I want as an ally more? Brandenburg or Bohemia? Oh my god, how far away is Novgorod from Diplo vassalization? They would never do it to me, I don't think. Nope. Distance between borders, huge penalty. Now, here, here, here's the thing. Having a friendly Prussia on my border would be great. Sorry, Brandenburg, they can't form Prussia. I've stopped them doing that. Um, Bohemia has territories I want. Because remember, one of my goals here is to get all of the Slavic peoples under my control. And they do own the Czechs. So I'm going to accept this. This is going to break my alliance with Bohemia. But I still have it with Brandenburg. That's annoying, because Bohemia's a big ally. And because these two hate each other, I'm not going to get this alliance back again. That's why I'm partially so annoyed about this. So, who are your other allies and enemies? You are currently allied with me and Austria. You know what? I have no displeasure with Austria, and Austria is actually rivals with Bohemia. So getting an alliance with Bohemia is not impossible. Oh, except you're allied to Hungary. Yeah, that makes it really more difficult.
Bohemia are hiring troops. Question here is how much on the offensive do I want to go or do I just want to keep them out of Brandenburg and let Brandenburg suffer the casualties? I think that's a fairly obvious <laughs> answer. What I could do actually is get Lithuania to launch the attack. So Lithuania, you go ahead and start sieging stuff. And I will go and block them from attacking Brandenburg. Unless, of course, I have uprisings to deal with. Oh, we'll stay here for now. Altmark is forest, so no, I don't want to fight there. Actually, you can stay in Magdeburg. Uh, you can go to Rupin, you can go to Magdeburg. Brauschwig. Owned by Unholt, which is their ally. Brauschwig is forest, so we would have the bonuses there. Do I really want to fight a 23,000 man army? Here. Hmm. I'm kind of happy to let them suffer some attrition while they're sieging it, especially as they're taking 2.4. Meanwhile, Brandenburg and Lithuania are dealing with Bohemia itself. Alright, so during this war, I'm going to say, I'm going to make my true feelings about this known. I'm going to say that I want those. Although Austria is probably saying that they want some of those. No, actually. Neither is Brandenburg. Huh. Let's check one. Check, check, yes. These are all Saxon. Don't care about those. Silesian. Silesian is... is Slavic. And Brandenburg's not saying that they want those either. Alright then. I do. <laughs> oh! I'll spend the money. Thanks. Right, what's my army tradition like at the moment? 48. Well, no, I don't want to spend any because I'm still waiting for Miltech 8. Are you Miltech 8? You probably are. Bra Bohemia are a good attack. They're not. Interesting. Oh, sorry, Nintendo. Are small nations not recommended for beginners? No, do not play as the small ones. If you want to learn the game, play as France. France are big enough that losing one or two battles, wars, won't matter. You're, you're, you're essentially too big to fail. Um, so yeah, I would strongly recommend France. The other thing about France is you are in a position to do everything in the game. You can pick and choose exactly what. You want to do a big thing of conquest? Fantastic. Go after Germany, go after Spain, go after Italy. You want to be more of a diplomatic meddler? Fantastic. You're on the edge of the HRE, you can screw with Austria. You want to do the colonial game? Fantastic. You have easy access to Canada and to the Americas and possibly even Caribbean and South America if you really wanted to go that far. And you are wealthy enough to do all of these, some of these, none of these. Totally up to you. So I would very strongly recommend that you play as France. France is a fantastic nation to learn. And yeah, get enough text to unlock a LAN and you're absolutely fantastic, really strong. Like, their national ideas are also really strong. What the hell has happened to Castile here? Do they still have the PU? Gah! I really want to see Aragon beat Castile for a change. Unfortunately, they're in a personal union now. Oh, even against Prussia, France can win. S simply out-morale them and out-manpower them. 
Like, France is extremely wealthy. So you can get huge amounts of manpower, or if you fail at the manpower, huge amounts of mercenaries. Are wind conditions for a war in this game similar to how it is for Hearts of Iron? <sighs> yes and no. Controlling territory is important, but that's not necessarily the only thing. It's what territory you control. Well, I guess that's like the victory points. So, yeah, it can be. I mean, the big thing about this is controlling forts. So anything with this icon on it is going to be important. Even more so if it has the crown, because that's their capital. Capitals, really valuable. And then also development. So you can see here the points, development. Uh, the more of that the province is worth, the more valuable. So like Krakow here, it's a fort and also high development, so it's going to be worth more points to conquer. It's also going to be more expensive to take. So here, okay. One thing which is super duper important, and you must under no circumstances go over, when you are making a peace deal, it looks like you can just take everything. Fantastic, I'll, I'll claim it all. Don't do that. So you have this thing here called overextension. So this province, Hlov, is worth 7%. Do not go over 100% overextension. This is, like, combined everything. And you can see overextension in this list here. So stability and expansion, overextension. 100% is, like, the absolute limit. If you go over that, very bad things start to happen to your nation. You will just explode in rebels. Don't do it. Especially as a beginner. Later on, you can tease it. Just don't make a habit of it. It's, it's a very bad idea. The other thing is coalitions. So again, if you're making a peace deal with someone, uh, hover over this list here. In fact, this is a great example. So if I took Hlovov here, hover over this, and you can see you get aggressive expansion, then under that it says, these countries might join a coalition against Poland. Teutonic Order, Hungary, and Saxony. That means that the Teutons, the Hungarians, and the Saxons will probably form an alliance against you. So this is like a faction in uh, Hearts of Iron. Uh, they have one purpose, killing you. Um, aggressive expansion is gained by taking hostile actions, or most importantly, taking territory. There are ways around it, like vassalization. More advanced, don't worry about that so much. But the main thing is just hover over there. So any nation that has more than 50 overextension with, sorry, 50 aggressive expansion against you will be joined into, well, is a candidate for joining a coalition. Uh, so one of the really important things is the coalition map mode, which will show you exactly how much your neighbours hate you. So hovering over here, Hungary, they're currently at 49. So basically doing anything to slightly aggravate the Hungarians will probably cause them to join a coalition against me. So this is an anti-blobbing mechanism. The, the idea of this is not to paint the world your colour in an afternoon. Our European Universalis is a much slower, much more patient game than Hearts of Iron is and it rewards you for being patient. So just don't abuse those mechanics, because they will 100% bite you in the arse, even if you're playing as France. I mean, that really is what's going to hit you if you play as France. If you try and take too much and gobble up, say, the whole of Burgundy in one war, don't do it. Pay attention to those. There are always future wars. So come back in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Every 10 years if you're feeling particularly sadistic. So how am I ensuring I don't reach the 50% for the Hungarians to go to war with you? I didn't take too much land. So when I was actually at war with Hungary, I took only these three provinces from them. I did not take the whole of Hungary, though I probably could have taken like half of it. Uh, the other thing is... Aggressive expansion is cumulative, so the more I took from Hungary, the less I could take from the Teutons up here, and so the Teutons who were my true target. So I limited myself to just these three provinces, and then took more from the Teutons. And also, over time, aggressive expansion will will de will uh, decrease. And you can actually see that. There, aggressive expansion, plus 2.2 .2 yearly. It's green, so that's positive, so it goes negative down to zero. So... In 24 years, that aggressive expansion will be completely gone. And I can do whatever the hell I like to Hungary again. Or you can just balance this. You can let it sink down by 10, then do something slightly aggressive against maybe Muscovy. The closer a country is, the more aggressive expansion they will suffer. So if I take stuff from Bohemia, that's going to really piss Hungary off because they're very, very close. Taking stuff from Bohemia, probably not going to piss... Sorry, taking stuff from Muscovy, probably not going to annoy Hungary quite as much. 
And then there are also other factors like what religion are they, what culture are they, are they rivals, are they allied with you against them? All those type of things. But that's all said in the peace deal. So when you are making that peace deal, just, just hover over this and it will tell you exactly what's going to happen. So as a result of this, Teutons, Hungary and Saxony all get lots of aggressive expansion and might trigger a coalition. We'll probably trigger a coalition with those three because Hungary and Teutons are my rivals. They hate me already. Oh yeah, and pissing off the Emperor. That's another thing. Um, <laughs> so this is another thing which you are going to need to worry about as France is you are on the outskirts of the Holy Roman Empire, which is basically all of this. I can actually show you exactly what that is. Here it is, Imperial. So if you attack any of the provinces, which are thus colored, so it's the green, it's the orange, and it's the red, um, chances are you will have to fight the Emperor as well. It'll tell you when you're declaring war. Like, this will call in Austria, the Emperor. The problem with that is the Emperor can call all of his allies. So this is like how World War One starts in European Universalis. So you might think, I'm only attacking Frankfurt. Who could possibly care about this? Uh, Austria will. So not only will you be fighting Frankfurt, Hess, Saxony, and Nassau, you will also be fighting Hungary, Augsburg, Brandenburg, Switzerland, Genoa, Utrecht, and Austria. Like, this is more complicated, so generally HRE, just be super careful and expand very slowly. Vassalize where possible. Don't just take it, vassalize. And yeah, we, ha we have a Discord, loads of people play, Europe, Europe, play European Universalis on there, so go and ask there. They're very helpful for stuff like this, because we, we understand it's complicated. But also, I'm I'm trying not to say too many things, because I don't want to scare you away from the game. It is so rewarding. Uh, there are just a couple of things to worry about. Like the unlawful territory, less of an issue. Still a problem, but less of an issue than aggressive expansion. Like, especially as you're just on the outskirts, the Emperor ain't going to care about that. It's once you get into Germany that he's going to be like, uh, No, I'm not happy with this. And even then, there are ways of manipulating it. There are always ways of manipulating it. Oh, you're about to fall. Yeah, we should go and fight Brass Freak. Uh, let's consolidate. Already did. Never mind. Ah. You had a sneaky army. That's slightly irritating. I might lose this fight. Although we have the forest on our side. They don't have a morale bonus. They have a slight... Oh, they have infantry ability? They have a lot of infantry ability. Where the hell did they get that from? Infantry combat ability plus 5. Shock damage received minus 5. <laughs> and guess what kind of damage I do? Shock. Oh, we're still killing them though. Well, the first round was in our favour. Yeah, just lots and lots of cavalry. So even though they take less shock damage, I still do loads of damage. So we got 10 war score from that. This was a big fight. This was a very, very important battle. So it was a good thing we won that one. And we also saved uh, Unholt's capital, so it's not going to get occupied, so we don't lose war score for that one. Yeah, the Stripe provinces are their owned, and then the colour of the Stripe is who's occupying it. So right now, Lundberg is occupying Altmark, and I'm occupying Hlovlov, and Brandenburg is occupying Dolny Luzice. Luzic. Luzic, probably. This isn't Italian. Uh, I'm going to go and stand in Altmark, and we'll go and hold Lupin. Oh, dear. Um, you arrive first. Let's not do this. So like Hearts of Iron, there are modifiers for when you attack and where you attack, so you do need to be a little bit careful about that. I'm kind of blitzing through that rather quickly. But Altmark is a forest, so if you're there defending the forest, then you get an advantage as the defender. Forts, screw with that a little bit. Um, basically, if you if there's a friendly fort in the province, you get the modifiers as defender regardless. But there's no fort here, so it's irrelevant. Which is why I was a bit cautious when to attack Altmark. Plus there's a river here, so I would have had the river crossing. Which again, like Hearts of Iron. Don't cross rivers if you don't have to. 
and you want the enemy to be crossing rivers to attack you. But it looks like we are slowly beating Bohemia back. This battle here was a really important one. We did a lot of damage. Oh, they're back in Altmark. Uh, they will have the defensive bonus. We could go and sit in Magdeburg again. Actually, what I kind of want to do is let them go for Brauschweig once more. So I'm going to sit back here. Whoa. Oh, we just killed a one stack. That's fine. But yeah, let's do that. Let's go and kill some of their one stacks. These are basically reinforcements they're trying to train. I'm not going to let them. Ooh, you just split up most of your army. That's a mistake. So I think I'm going to go and attack this army again. First of all, consolidate. So this is what I'm doing here with the shift consolidation. Don't worry about that, that's quite advanced. It's basically just making sure that your units are as big as possible before you attack. Ready to serve, my lord. Murdering. Oh dear, they brought in reinforcements again. Hey, Republic of Play, thanks very much for the host. Yeah, you just move an army into the province. Uh, so, for example, here, we're attacking Prague, the capital, Praha. There's a percentage here, that's the percentage chance every cycle that you'll take that province. So we have a 21% chance of taking the province. And then this little green bar here, um, that goes up over time. It's actually the representation of this clock. Uh, so every... 31 days, so every month, uh, there's a 21% chance that we will take this fort. And if there's not a fort there, then it's just like one month and you take it. And this is yet another big battle. I was not intending to lose all the manpower in these fights. Damn you, Brandenburg, making me fight stuff. Hunholt's bringing in reinforcements, which is good, because we might be on the verge of losing this. 10th of March, four more days. Can I hold for four days? No. Piped on the last day again. Damn it! Brandenburg's on the way, though. Brandenburg's got a really strong army, so... Yeah. With Brandenburg's support, they could hold and, in fact, win. And again, we are the defender because we hold the fort. So even though they arrived after, they still get the defensive bonus, so it was fine. But now, I have lost more troops than I ever intended to lose in this fight, so I'm going to sit back and recover. Because I'm 13,000 men down. I don't want to be suffering... Rebellions, which in fact Lithuania is right now. So I'm going to go and deal with those first. I'm done. 